Hello again. It's Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week, and we are so glad that you have joined us. Ashley Stremme and Steve Post here from the Hercules Tire Studios in Concord, North Carolina. Freddie Raymer is our guest. And speaking of Pennsylvania, Ashley, you're smiling, you're <laughs> laughing, because it's the icebreaker. It is. I mean, obviously, it's... 50 or 50 chance, if you will. Oh, yeah. And I know it was a little bit of a, a mess a because we've had so much snow and pen, water in Pennsylvania, Track rain. Was heavy. Yes, there you go. <laughs> um, but it's the icebreaker. Yeah. I mean, you just, you know that going into it, and that's why the place was absolutely packed. It's unreal. Our tweet will show you a, a, a video, and the crowd is unreal. Ashley, this could probably not happen anywhere else in the world. And I'm not even sure it happens at other tracks in Pennsylvania, but Lincoln pulls this off so good. They really do. I think it's more just the fact that it's so iconic. It's been around for so many years. I remember going to the icebreaker as a kid and them using a grater to get snow off the track yeah. so we could go racing. I think it's just that you got to be there. You got to do it. It's the one time of the year that you know you're going to freeze your tush off. You're going to probably walk in through snow. And you're going to see sprint cars. They moved the start time back, which is against conventional wisdom right. in the spring. But the temperature was going to be all right to start at, I think, 4 o'clock so that they could scrape more ice <laughs> off from the grandstands and the seats in the parking area. It's just so it's historic. The icebreaker. Yes, you have to be there. I, I it's a bu it's become a bucket list <laughs> race. I mean, unreal. I and mean, you are dressed head to toe in your car hearts. Yeah. You know, you are bundled up for everything. Yeah. <laughs> Beer Hill Gang was there. They were yeah. there was a whole bunch of them doing some kind of <laughs> uh, some kind of fighter pilot uh, slip and slide body thing in mud the mud. Sliding. Body mud sliding. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's Pennsylvania Posse. That's that right. is for sure. Proud. And when they got to the racetrack. It was Tim Wagaman getting the win. He drove around Kyle Moody. Here's our friend Wayne Harper with the call on Flow Racing. And now for the Dry Dean Death Defying Move of the Week, where one driver simply amazes us with their on track moves. On the restart, Wagaman grabs the lead as they go down the back stretch and Wagaman, your new leader. That Death Defying Move was brought to you by Dry Dean Diesel All Death, the official death of the world of outlaws and wheelmen everywhere. Visit drydean.com for more information. Pride. Passion. Performance. We are. We are. We are Team Drydean. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go to the Hercules Tire Hotline. Joining us is the reigning champ, fabulous Lincoln Speedway, and the reigning champ from Williams Grove, Freddie Raymer. Hello, Freddie. Welcome back to Wing Nation. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me on, and uh, good to talk to you. Good to catch up with you as well. Freddie, we talked in the opening segment, Ashley and I did, about the heavy track conditions and the challenges of Lincoln on the icebreaker. We all kind of know that, but I don't care what anyone says. It has to be good to slide down in a cockpit of a sprint car and at least get a little bit of the rust knocked off after the offseason. Had to be fun to get out to Lincoln on Saturday. No, it was definitely. I mean, we didn't have a good first showing or whatever, but, I mean, it was good to get back in the routine and be around everybody and, uh, you know, get get back familiarized with everything. It's, it's pretty exciting. Uh, you know, you get through the first couple and then you get back uh, feeling like yourself again, but definitely was and looking forward to this week coming up. Freddie, you've obviously been to, I'm sure, multiple icebreakers. Is there one that sticks out to you because of the weather being so sporadic? Uh, not really. Uh, last year was pretty good weather, actually. The first one we got in, like the 20th or the 22nd, it was, it was good. But I remember going back a while, like when my dad, some of those icebreakers, I mean, it was all but 60-some degrees in February, so... I don't know when that was, but there are some good ones for sure. 
it's almost like the good ones are the extremes because you expect <laughs> it to be 40 and wet and muddy and everything else. And then we get a little extreme of snow every once in a while. Freddie, it was kind of neat. Had to be kind of a neat moment. I saw a good picture of you and your dad with the trophies there. Um, the Lincoln crown, we talked at the end of last year that that wasn't necessarily where your goals were last year, but uh, checking that one off and, and grabbing another championship and getting the hardware this past weekend, that had to be pretty neat. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, I was neat to be able to win both of those at the end of last year. We got going pretty good, like later in the season and stuff. And uh, cool to do with my parents owning the car and my dad helping me. And Moon helped us for most of the year. And it was cool to get done. And I'm just we're just looking forward to this year and building off of that and try and win some races and then see if that stuff works out again at the end. The banquet obviously wasn't be able to be held because of COVID. And banquets are always... I don't know. They're different. You know, different. it's very different at a banquet. You're not you're with your racing buddies, but you're not in racing attire. What was it like actually being kind of having the banquet on the front stretch or, or there by the flag stand? Was it different having all the race fans there instead of just the, the banquet people that attend? Uh, I guess so. It was cool to, to, you know, I don't go over that side very much. It's cool to see everyone. And uh, that was probably neater than going to an actual banquet and have to go through all that routine. but. In that aspect, to see everybody and their actions and all that stuff, so that was that was pretty neat. And uh, I don't know, it was just good to get back to the track and see everyone. And uh, you know, everybody's excited. Just to get through the first month or so of this, the weather being shaky and every you know adverse conditions and stuff. But the way the, the way it looks with all the schedules and everything, and what the tracks are paying around here, and mm. it's pretty exciting to to have the opportunity to race around here right now. Fred, I want to talk about the 2021 season because there is a lot of excitement, a lot of energy up in Pennsylvania. But in your last answer, you mentioned the name of a person that has been a big part of your past, Moon Byers, okay? And Moon is one of those legendary, iconic crew chiefs. He'll spend a year or two with you and then get hired somewhere else, and then he comes back. You had said that Moon was part of your program again last year. Um, what does Moon bring to the table, and why is that relationship always good when you guys – get to get together with moon uh just i mean just a lot of experience and knowledge and you know you good person and to be around and uh just taught us a lot i mean my dad worked with him for many years at different points you know at throughout time and stuff and uh you know he taught me a lot in different ways and uh helped both i mean me and my brother and Stevie when they raced and my dad for a long time so I mean, he still helps us, you know, if he's not there or if we call him for whatever we need or he's just a good friend and stuff. So, you know, I think we have a real good place to start where we're at. And basically, we don't need to do a whole lot. Just basically just me focus on driving and having fun and be more important than worrying too much about that stuff at, at this point, I think. Having fun. That's what it's yeah. all about. Yeah. I'm curious, though, Freddie, does Moon ever compare you to your dad driving style-wise? <laughs> uh, no, not really. When he when he helped us all the time, uh, not really. Uh, I wouldn't say that. No, not really. How do you compare to your dad driving style-wise? Uh, I'd say we're pretty similar. Uh you know, I I like when the track is more slick and technical, honestly, than like having to run against the fence, like uh, maybe you do say at Port Royal or so right now. But I think that I need to be more like that, honestly. But uh, like watching Stevie and stuff when he was got to be around him was a really good experience, and I think some of somewhat I might race a little more like he does, just because of the timing when he I was starting to race and trying to learn off of him, so. And, but in most ways, overall, I'm, I would say I'm similar or trying to be similar to what my dad was tactical at, you know? Yeah, I, I had a conversation with uh, the late Greg Hodnett one time, and he said that uh, uh, Fred, Stevie, and Freddie all are pretty similar in their driving style, and uh, it's worked for every one of you so far. So really, really good. Freddie, hang in there with us. Everyone else, stick around more with Freddie Raymer in just a moment. Hey, Ashley, what are you up to? Oh, I just stopped by to grab some sage fruit apples. Now I just have to decide which ones. You can never go wrong with a Honeycrisp. They're light, crisp, 
and full of perfectly balanced flavor. Oh, hey! You could always go with one of their classics, the Gala or Fuji. They're both sweet and juicy. Grown in the heart of eastern Washington, Sage Fruit Company works hard on the farm and with their retail partners to provide high-quality apples and pears to consumers all year long. Well, I couldn't decide which ones. Thanks for the help, guys. I'll race you to check out. It is Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing. We're talking with Freddie Raymer on the Hercules Tire Hotline. Freddie, one of the things that Ashley and I love to do, we love to go off the racetrack, and we have talked to you about your dad multiple times. We talked the last time <laughs> about your new soon-to-be brother-in-law. I don't believe we have ever talked about your grandfather, okay, and the history that this is. And this is this is your mom, Deb's father, Frank Rio, a longtime car owner, the R10 car in eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Tell me about your grandfather. Yeah, I mean, he owned cars for, I don't know when he started, but a long time. And, uh, you know, running back at Reading and, like, Hatfield was a track that no longer exists around here. But uh, they still have a car. They, they don't run much anymore. But he always ran modified mostly. And uh, he had a lot of different drivers. You know, some didn't last as long as others or whatever, but, uh, I mean, he had Fred Hearn ran his car, Dave Blaney, and uh, him and my uncle uh, both were really big into it and kind of, uh, you know, worked on it themselves and enjoyed that part of it mostly. And uh, they were pretty big into it too, but that, that part of the family is, you know, as much as the other part. So it's it pretty neat to see that. Ashley, he's 94 years old. Yeah. He's Freddie's young. That's right. 94 <laughs> years young and still digging. That's absolutely <laughs> incredible. Freddie, have you ever wanted to climb behind the wheel of a modified? <laughs> uh, no, not really. I don't think. I don't know if we have to run a sprint car. I don't know if there's anything else to compare to that. I mean, maybe someday to, to hot lap one or something or practice, but to be like, totally committed to something i don't it'd be hard to beat a sprint car i think freddie one of the other family members uh is your twin brother you are part of triplets chessie is your sister your brother brandon he does a company he does graphic artwork chop designs and i was looking through some facebook posts my gosh your brother some of those cars is is do you ever, do you ever talk with him about them do you marvel at the creativity he has what he puts together as far as some of those i saw a legends car and uh and a slingshot i think that were just awesome yeah and no, i do i mean his shop where he does that graphic stuff is right where at our house so i check out most of the stuff he's doing or mostly critique if i don't like it or something me but uh i mean he, he's very creative with it He's different, like, thinking than I am with that kind of stuff. I could never be that creative or mm -hmm. or think of, you know, that whatever, the different schemes or whatever. But, no, he does a good job, and uh, I always check in and see what he's got going on. I love it. Your family is just so deeply rooted in, in racing yeah. in so many facets. And, Freddie, that kind of draws me to the next question. Do you put – pressure on yourself do you have milestones that you want to hit in your career knowing how deeply rooted your family is in racing i uh, i think so i think i put more pressure on myself than uh the rest of my family would or my dad is being the car owner or whatever or, or sponsors but sometimes you get caught up in that too much and lose a little bit of having fun but uh i definitely do and some some people that guide me along the way told me to write goals down and try to try to get to them when you do, you know, celebrate them, but then keep in mind to keep going, you know. So I definitely do. And uh, but like uh, throughout the way, you still got to have fun and do the whole thing. And uh, I mean, we're doing pretty good. It's just you're never totally happy, but uh, we're getting we're getting real close. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do this year with everyone. Well, let's talk about this year, Freddie. The 2021 season, a lot of money up in Pennsylvania. Um, are you are you looking to – what is the plan for 2021? Uh, mostly racing around here. Like, I don't usually write a schedule down, but there's like 80, all but 90 races you can run oh right around here in Jersey a little bit, uh, just mostly central Pennsylvania. So we're going to run as many as we can. You know, Grove on Friday nights for sure, and then uh, – Maybe skip around on Saturdays, go to just depend on what pays a little more, what makes sense that night. But just try to be in contention every night. 
I'd like to travel, though, uh, you know, maybe get, go out to Knoxville at the end of the year there for that. But I'd like possible to go out before then. And I don't know if it would happen this year, but I'd like to get to Eldora at some point. And uh, just I don't want to travel a bunch, but I want to, for further down the road, I want to be able to run be competitive all them tracks. So we got to keep that in mind. But in our program, it, it makes sense to run around here because we can – typically run pretty good most nights and it helps fund the car so we just got to balance that out with everything else you know at this point building for the future i, I love nice it that's what it's I all know. about yeah. especially when you're freddie's age you know yeah, so young and so years much old and so much talent that's right <laughs> exactly yes. freddie with that being said you it's almost like a world of outlaw schedule except you get to sleep in your own bed that many races <laughs> What does that the week look f- like for you? Because obviously you have a job, then you help your dad, and then you've got to work on the race car. And if you're racing that many nights a year, there's got to be a lot of lack of sleep in there somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I usually, you know, we get up early and go to work and do that stuff and get done. But a couple of people help us at the shop, so it's not too bad. But, I mean, mostly every day of the week, uh, usually – if everything's going good, you can take like a Wednesday night off or, sun, you know, most days Sunday or, you know, after the morning or something. But, uh, you know, I think you, you gotta, you gotta be a little bit balanced and then you get, you get burnt out at times. So you gotta take time when you can to be, you know, to get, to be somewhat neutral or whatever. So, but you you guys know how much commitment it is. So, uh, it's all good though. I mean, it's just this point in my life, that's what it takes. And, I mean, I enjoy it too, so it's it's all worth it, really. Yeah, a lot of commitment, but a lot of passion for it, that's for sure. Freddie, it is always a pleasure to chat with you. We wish you the best on the title defense at Williams Grove and all your Saturday night racing and wherever the road takes you this year. It sounds like an exciting season. We appreciate you joining us here on Wing Nation. All right, guys, thanks for having me, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. You got thanks. it. Freddie Raymer joining us here on Wing Nation. Stay with us. Our Tweet Your Seat Tweet of the Week and a lap around the sprint car world are coming up. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing uh, during our break. We're still talking about spaghetti. Oh, my gosh. And food and, <laughs> food and race tracks, right? Food and race tracks is better. such a good combination. So uh, get out to the track this year, this week, next week. Get out to the track. Enjoy some food. I know, uh, what is it, Sunday Port opens up. That's right. And, and got, I'll be there. You'll be there. I'll be there. So what's your number one concession <laughs> deal at Port Royal? I don't know. French fries. The, the fries. fresh cut fries, the for fresh, sure. With a little vinegar and salt. Yeah, and some cheese. Don't forget the cheese. And cheese. cheese. Oh, you so you got it all. Yeah. I am telling you, um, <laughs> Port Royal, the food there. Yes. Huh. Oh, my gosh. Well, We do it right. Yeah. Spring car racing, absolutely. food. No, I'm just kidding. There you go. Exactly. What else is it? What, <laughs> what else, else is it? Right. Yeah, what else do you need? That's for sure. <laughs> hey, it is our 10th anniversary. So uh, you can follow along all year long at wingnation.com. We have a podcast or two of them that go every week. Aaron Evernham and I do that. That's all at wingnation.com. Wing Nation gear is there now, but we are working on some 10th anniversary Wing Nation gear. Fancy so, stuff. Fans. Oh, we're going to be fancy. fancy. Oh, we're going to be fancy. We're going to walk <laughs> into the dirt track looking good. Um, it is really, really cool. So just follow along with us at Wing Nation and all of our social channels. Thank you to Freddie Raymer for joining us. Love catching up with the champ up there in Pennsylvania. More important, though, than all of that, thank you for joining us this, this, this week on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.